We've got plenty to talk about. We've got some other bits of the papers to get through as well. But shall we kick off with a four-day working week in oh, Germany? Isn't that good? You know, we were always called the sick man of Europe because yes. we didn't work as hard as everybody else. But the Germans, I think, actually have quite well um, sort of documented days off and they have yeah. lots of... It's, uh, it's about 21 days they take off. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's quite so they don't actually the work Europe. that hard already, well, do well, they? Well, what they're saying is about productivity. Now, mm. if they're right, and I, I actually believe this, if you can do your whole day's work in one hour, you pay for results. I think that's great. They're saying you could be just as productive doing four days as you are doing five. And they pe think that people don't get as sick and so on and so forth. There are certain jobs that it wouldn't work for, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah but you know what that present. tells me, though? If you can do all of your work in four days yes. instead of five, then you haven't got enough to do. Exactly. Right. Because if you're supposed to work a five-day week, then you don't need to, effectively. And, I mean, people who work from home always say this, don't they? Oh, I'm much more efficient when I work from home. Well, how do I know? You know, I've only got your word for it. You're well, you basically say, you say, doing all your work yeah. in two hours and then, you and, know, yeah. taking them... And all the people who advocate for this four-day week always say, oh, it's a far more efficient... Because they would say that, wouldn't they? Yeah. And the, the, I guess the question is, is that even if, say, their hourly productivity goes up, the actual loss of hours within the week by yeah. working one day might be outweigh, right. you know, might still outweigh that. Exactly. Um, yeah. And there so. are certain things about people not being at work yeah. which are infuriating. I mean, years ago when I used to be in newspapers, um, I had a, a secretary who went off and had a baby, and when she came back, she didn't want to work full time, so they split the job, and they had so I had basically two secretaries, one that did two and a half days, and the other one did the other two and a half days. Right. And it was a nightmare, because every time I'd ask one of them something, they never knew the answer, because it was the other one that had done it. Yeah. And I could never remember which one of them had done it. So it was a massive holes in the whole organisation all the time. But this whole balance, work-life balancing, yeah. do you think there's an argument to be, to be made for just having, going back to the day of rest, so having a day yeah. when there's nothing, when you're not allowed to yeah. say, yeah, I'll go in and do that show, or, or anything. Yeah. No shops open, no, ch no churches, no mosques, no... Mm. Nothing at all. Everybody has to do nothing. Which one day, day would you propose that? Just it could be a Sunday, it could be a is Saturday. It? Just but one day in a week when well, we, we people... can't. But it would not have to be. Would it have to be the same day for everyone though? Wouldn't it? If you're going to yeah, close day, shops. No, one day when everybody does nothing. Yeah. And the Sunday trading laws. Are well, what really would happen if you got really sick? Yeah. You couldn't go to hospital. Yes. But no, that, it is difficult doing that sort of stuff. But also, you've got to work out what they're going to do with all this extra time. So if they're right. going to spend it, they're going to put the money back into the economy. Mm. What I think is going to happen is if you do that, the reality is, Goldman Sachs said, as a result of AI, my baby project all the time, yeah. 300 million jobs can lost. We're going to I wouldn't more... believe a word Goldman Sachs say, by the way. <laughs> I mean, these are the same people that or said you. Greece qualified for the European <laughs> or Union. Or him. He's yeah. a futurologist. Yeah, I, I wouldn't Thank believe you. a word yeah. I've got says. an ology, you know, say more yeah. than Lippmann would tell you. Uh, but that's you the reality. You doctor to see to that. <laughs> I, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. But that's the reality. They're going to have more leisure time as a result anyway. So we are going to be more efficient. What you need to look is the, the net, in the same way as net Yeah, migration. but a lot of people aren't good for anything else apart not from working. Not leisure. They're just well. staring at their phones. Right. No one has leisure I mean, an awful lot of people have not actually got the imagination or the time talent to do anything other than work. Yeah. So and that's if, the problem. if you give them loads of free time, they're just going to waste it. They need a purpose in life. And what, what people prove is when people retire, they, mortality obviously is, is significantly increased because they're not doing anything. Yeah. People who keep on yeah. working have yeah. a purpose in that's life the thing. will live longer. And also, if you don't really have any discipline in your life yes. and you get that discipline from going to work and getting what used yep. to be the case that you'd actually get up in the morning, you get dressed, you'd go out, you'd get on a train or something or a bus. Train? You'd go to <laughs> work <laughs> if it wasn't on strike. Good luck with that. You know, and then you would do some yeah. work and then yes. you would finish your work and you would come home. Now, I think part of the problem in this country is that since COVID, an awful lot of people are no longer doing any, any of that. Yeah. So they've completely well, look lost look at the their drive. In, yeah, in, men, in kind of mental illness yeah. and all yeah. of that, depression, anxiety, right. loneliness, all of that is really Because when you sit around for long enough, lack it's not good for you. No, no, it's, it's very bad. And that's the real problem. We are going to get more leisure time, but we don't know what to do with it. Right. And that's what you do need to have a purpose in life. And I think what people have realised about the inefficiencies they used to have, lockdowns that realised that, hang about your train journey took mm. an hour to get in and an hour mm. to get home in the, in the evening. Right. You could be more efficient in that time. But I do believe, going back to the point you made at the very beginning of this excellent show, about productivity. Mm. So all these big bosses and so on and so forth, it is about productivity. That's how bonuses should tie in. Yeah. If you are productive in your one hour and effective, I think that should be OK. And I don't think you have to work the rest of the time. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it also depends on the type of job you're doing. Yes, different you know, types of jobs. Because, I mean, you know, for example, if we go back to the train, uh, train drivers, they've got amazing sort of um, paying conditions that, that they obviously don't want to uh, mess up. One of them is that if they drive a train sort of from, say, London to Scotland, yes. they don't actually drive it all the way to Scotland. They have to stop 
because they have to have a break, because right. otherwise, you know, it's against the rules. So quite often they'll stop at somewhere like Leeds, yes. and they'll get off the train, somebody else gets on, drives it the rest of the way, they wait for a train to come back, um, and that's their next sort of shift on, if you like. And then they get back to London, and that's the end of the day. That's, that, that's, that's all go. they've done. We, we were You've literally about... driven to Leeds and back, that's it. And we were talking about um, And they're not driving. No. Just sit there and press a button. Right. That's what you do, don't you? And you honk no. the horn occasionally. That's, I'll do that job. Um, train drivers and tube drivers take many more sick days on right. average than the, the, sort of the rest of the working population. Yes. Is that right? Are they, yeah. Is it, are they, they would say they're more Because stressed. they can. Yes. They're stressed because they're, they're stressed. dealing with members of the public, Absolutely. aggressive members of the public, yeah. asking them questions. I mean, they do say occasionally like, somebody jumps in front of the train, which I'm yes. sure is not a very pleasant thing to have to witness. But, you know, it doesn't happen every day. Um, and, you know, you might as well say the same thing about driving a lorry. You know, somebody might, you know, you might run somebody over while yeah. you're driving a lorry. Yeah. You know, it's not like people are throwing themselves in front of trains every day. So I'm not really buying that. But, yeah, I just think, you know, what about if, if Sadiq Khan cares so much about people's health and clean air, how does he allow all these people to go into the tube and drive tube trains all day without actually offering them some kind of compensation or at least a mask to wear? Good question. Um... I, I, I got an email actually this week from, from my council in London, Westminster, that uh, parking charges are going to go up as, as part of a green yes. policy. Yeah, for we're London. going to be talking about that in a bit. Um, so, yes, it Khan supposedly cares very much about uh, clean air in London. And oh, he does. You, Les, and, and now Westminster are going to charge me a couple of hundred pounds more to park my yeah, car. Because that will save it, the planet. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> see, it, well, it seems to be a very good exercise. As the only green person here, I was not, and I don't mean green, as in a. You're not some kind of eco-zealot, are you? No, no. But I was cycling behind a bus today yes. in the middle of London and I cannot even... And, and, Mike, even you would have objected. The amount of black smoke pouring out of this bus... Really? ..was absolutely was appalling. I mean, it was... No, no, people... <laughs> the electric one. <laughs> yeah, the electric one. The electric no, one. it, was, it was really criminal, I whether you're they green got rid of or not, those. whether you're on a no, bus or not. No, I thought they got rid of them. Yes. And I had a three-year-old on the back yeah. and it was absolutely disgusting. But I thought they got rid of all those. Haven't they? But there are still buses and there are still the occasional kind of like what you know vans or whatever yeah. you see them and you and can't believe filthy. it's even legal. Right. No, the, and yeah, I right. mean that really just black smoke uh -huh. pouring out. I thought I actually thought the bus was on fire. Why isn't Sadiq Khan making that they kind of thing it. illegal? And it, and yeah. It's not safe to cycle in London anyway, is it? I mean that you get so, not just the pollution but cars and so oh, on. And so the forth. aggressiveness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's incredible. I mean, I wouldn't do it. I, just I, wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. Do it, it is scary. It is. Scary. I bet it's scary. I'll delegate you to be my my, my bicycle person. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, okay. you do it on my behalf. But no, you, I mean you're absolutely right. I mean, whenever you know, I've, you know, when you sit in the car and you can, you can turn the. Um, you know, the external intake off. Yeah. So if you're going through a tunnel or something, you're just you're circulating your own air. Right. But sometimes you can sit behind a car that's obviously quite an old car, right. and it stinks, yeah. you know. But new cars, of course, don't, and that's the thing that annoys me the most, because if you've got a relatively new car, which is two or three years old, it's pretty clean, you know, yeah. uh, even if it's a diesel, yeah. you know. But but they're determined to just... I was reading a thing today about Regent Street. They're going to pedestrianise Regent that's Street right. to that. make it into some kind of, you know, European paradise. Yes. Well, I want a bloody European paradise. <laughs> this is London. Yeah. So if I want to go and walk around, you know, the Eiffel Tower and have a look at how nice it is because there aren't any cars there, yes. great. But Regent Street is a road. Mm. It's got buses on it. It's got cars on it. It's, and every know, time they pedestrianise an area, it never, you know, it's never this sort of um, European idyll that they yeah. would imagine with street cafes. Yeah. And things. It's just kind of... But they've been well, introducing it. I mean, all that will happen, happen is you won't get run over by anybody when you're running away from the knife mob that's trying exactly. to stab you to death while you've gone shopping at the Apple Store. You won't be able store. to find a taxi or anything. Yeah. You'll be oh, God, no. Well, there won't be any taxis because it's Cause... pedestrian only. Yes. Um, and once you shut off one sort of major vessel in London, all you do is create congestion and traffic exactly. and... and yeah. another road. I know. Um, Have you seen this story talking about uh, exercise? Marathon runner carrying a fridge was mistaken for a burglar <laughs> in Stevenage was stopped and questioned by the police. Extraordinary picture. Do you remember that, com do you remember that comedian? You yes. the best stories. Yeah, do you remember Two that? things I'll never do. Run a marathon and right. carry a fridge. Yes. Do you remember that? There was a comedian, wasn't there, who did a whole sort of series of, of, of shows based on the fact that he was carrying a fridge around Ireland, I think it was. Oh, oh yeah. Do you remember? A good I mean, friend was... of mine, Tony Hawks. Tony, was yeah, it Tony? Yeah, he was... Yeah, but he kind of dragged it. He pulled... Yeah, it he was funny, though. His career, actually, was round Ireland with a fridge. Right. And then he did, you know beating the Moldovans at tennis. And he right. took on the entire Moldovan tennis team and vowed to beat them. He did lots of funny things like that. But with the fridge, he had all these adventures right. because he was just walking around Ireland, yeah. dragging it on a little shopping trolley. Yeah. I once went on a golfing trip to Ireland and we picked up a pianist on the way. We went, um, we went to this bar one night and this guy was tinkering around the piano and there was, there was you know, the usual golfing trip with about 25, 30 people. 
And uh, this, we had so much trouble with this guy. He said, well, we're going to Killarney and around sort of the south part of the island. Do you fancy coming? He went, oh, yeah, sure. So we just paid him to come with us. <laughs> so everywhere we went, we had this pianist and it's oh, great. And he played music as you went? Well, yeah, because every, you every pub. You paid him. You had, like, a private yeah, musician yeah. with yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So really, the kind of thing that Henry VIII would it have had. It was brilliant. Oh, I love and it. And so, like, every pub, because all the Irish pubs have got pianos. Yes. So everywhere we went, this guy would just turn up and start playing oh, the piano. How brilliant is that? It was amazing. You could bring him on to do the theme tune for the, for the show. You could. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so anyway, this guy, I don't know why he was carrying a fridge. He was training for a marathon. It was apparently really good to build his strength yeah. in carrying a fridge. Why a fridge? Well, I know, it's rubbish, isn't it? So it's, it's, unwieldy, it's, I mean, yeah. really. But I think he kept his beers in the back as he, so he sort of sit down and then you can take one for the road. I, yeah. I never understand people that run marathons dressed up in, no. like, as a pillow box, as a, as a spot or oh, whatever. You think, a... you're going to run 26.2 miles and you're going to be dressed yes, like that. Yes, I, I know. Yeah. I'm not a fan of marathons, I must admit. No. Partly because they close off so many bits they of do. London when they have a marathon. <laughs> and again, I can't drive around on the streets when I paid to do so. Um, what about Guinness? We're talking about Ireland. Yes. Apparently, Guinness is now surging. I'm sure this is just a, a, a PR stuff. Of course stunt. it is. 24% you know, up. Whilst got, all the other they're outcomes saying that down. young women Absolutely. are now drinking Guinness. I yeah. mean, it is 2024. I mean, why should you be surprised Is by it that? true with Guinness that a, one pint of Guinness has the same amount of calories and, you know, um, nutritional, yeah, nutritional kind of heft as a, ro a full Sunday roast? Something like that. I, I I'm not it, sure it's it quite really as much. It's got good vitamins in it. They used to say Guinness is good I'm not sure it's quite as much. But I know from when I used to do the morning show and I'd finish at one o'clock, if I was feeling a bit hungry and I ended up in the Pub, one pint of Guinness. I wasn't hungry anymore. Yeah, so yeah. It, I think it's got more filling stuff in it. Yeah, said, on that sort of basis. We need to check the ca the caloric content, but I think it's about two thousand calories or something. Two yeah. thousand no, calories. I'm told 125 yeah, no, no, no. calories per what? Per twelve six. ounces. Oh, it's twelve oh, ounces. Okay. Okay. Is that like probably, half yeah, a pint? About Quick maths. 800 calories. Yeah. Probably about the same as a woman. But it is good for you. And people used to drink it even when they were pregnant, I think. Because it's, it's got the, it's got of the uh, malty now, kind of stuff. They used yes. to call it mothering yeah. stout. That's yeah. what yeah. they did. Yeast exactly, didn't like they? That. So when people, yeah. were, when they were pregnant, they used to have a recommended that. I mean, our neighbours, I know, elderly neighbours, that's what they used to do. Mm. Obviously now build with alcohol, up. they used to build you up and that sort of stuff. I've never tasted I have to say, I haven't noticed people, young women in pubs, drinking it. No. Particularly, it seems well, I have. It does feel like it's a. No. I mean, that, that's the other sexist thing, isn't it? Because they. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this will be the next they'll be what saying, you, you know, oh, all these young women are drinking pints of beer. It's <laughs> absolutely astonishing. Well, really, is it? I mean, why shouldn't they? And a few weeks ago, they were saying that, you know, actually dry January's failed completely mm. and that pub sales were soaring. And yes. then at the weekend, there was a story that pubs are absolutely on their knees and. Everyone's drinking low alcohol or no alcohol, yeah. and it's all a disaster in the hospitality. But low alcohol stuff's Who even knows? more expensive yeah, than alcohol. They make much bigger margins yeah. on the low alcohol. So mm. dry white wine, dry sherry, dry yeah. dry champagne. As you work on dry champagne, I bought some but by accident right. once. Some no, low alcohol, well, no alcohol wine. And was it drinkable? It was once I put some proper wine in it. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I didn't have it on its own. I imagine it's just sugar. But I was on the same bloody display, and I was I was yes. picking up some rosé, and I suddenly got it home, and two of them were non-alcoholic. Yeah. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> but some, some of them are okay. Give it right. to the dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but some of them, they've done some really good flavours, but they're not Yeah, but why stuff. are you paying ridiculous amounts of money No, for that's it? the crazy thing. You're right. They're you shouldn't be paying, like, 15 quid be. for a bottle of fake wine. You shouldn't be. Should you? But there's even it, a it, few you're... bars that have opened that are, are non-alcohol really? bars. Yeah, there's, like, one in... I think there's one in Waterloo, there's one in Manchester where they, they serve ridiculous. only non-alcoholic beer. That is mad, isn't it? Just, that's a cafe, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah essentially, Exactly. Played chess in it or something like that. Nonsense. Anyway, we've got more to come. You're watching.